So we all know that one of the most common problems in the horse world is dealing with a horse that doesn't respect you. So today, I wanted to show you guys some groundwork techniques you can use to help teach your horse how to respect you. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel and like this video. And I love getting to know you guys. I want to get to know you more. So why don't you comment below your dream horse breed? Okay, so the first thing I want for my horse when it comes to groundwork for respect is anytime I am stopping and just standing with my horse, I want my horse to stand facing me. And this way, you know, if a horse is facing you, that means they're focused on you. And it also means that they're gonna respect where you are. So in order to get my horse to stop and face me, what I'm gonna do is teach them to disengage their hind end. And this is when they swing their hind end around. And that means they can pivot on their front end so then they can suddenly be facing a different way. So this will translate when you go through gates and you turn to shut the gate, the horse should turn to face you. This goes to lunging your horse when you want your horse to stop. You can disengage their hind end and have them face you. And just anything with groundwork really, you can have that control so you can control where your horse is facing. So I know that's a big concept, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what this looks like. So what I'm looking for when I apply pressure to my horse's hind end is I want their hind legs to step away from me, but I want them to cross one in front of the other. So if you've never done this before, you may be a little confused on how to ask your horse to disengage your hind end. So I'm gonna show you real quick how you can do this. So here's the easiest way I know how to teach your horse to do this. I'm gonna grab my lead rope and I'm gonna walk back to the horse's shoulder, applying pressure to his face. And see, Tucker already knows, so he's gonna step away. But I'm gonna bring my hand up to the withers and if I need to, I can use the end of my rope to swing at his hind leg to encourage him to step away. Yeah, good boy. So in the beginning, even if your horse takes one step away from you that's great so you'll stop and you'll reward them and you'll let them know that that's what you want so once you can get a few comfortable and confident steps from your horse then you can start asking them for more and asking them to disengage their hind end um, in like a complete circle and so when you do that you can just stay at the shoulder keep the pressure at the withers and you can just walk with your horse as they move so good boy good boy so one problem I've heard from you guys is that when you bring the lead rope back to the horse's withers, the horse just wants to back up. So in that instance, what you're going to do is I'm going to focus on bringing the horse's head out and back to the withers so I get a little bend in their neck. But then also make sure you're adding a lot of pressure this way. And of course he moves when I go to do that. So what you're going to do is you want to make sure you create with your body a lot of motion towards the hind end so they understand they need to step away from you. Even if you need to press right here to tell them that that's what you want, you can do that in the beginning. So I'll take my hand up here and I'm gonna press on his hind end. Good, and as soon as he steps away, I'll release. Good boy. So once you can effectively disengage your horse's hind end by being next to them, now it's time to disengage their hind end so they stop facing you. So a perfect place to start practicing this is simply when you walk through gates and when you turn to shut the gate, you want your horse to turn their hind end so they're then facing you. Good boy. Good boy. So I want to show you guys how to do this from a standstill to get your horse to turn and face you before we do it lunging where we're trotting or cantering. So what you're going to do is when you want your horse to stop and face you, you're first going to take a few steps and you're going to run your hand down the line to where a point where you can grab it. And then I'm going to grab my rope and I'm going to walk as if I'm going to walk behind the horse. And so when I do that, oh, see how fast he moves away? And I moved a little suddenly there, so I freaked him out, but I'll do it again. So if I'm lunging, and let's say he's on the circle, and I want him to turn his hind end, run my hand down the rope, I would walk as if I'm going behind him. And see, so he's just moving around me right now, which is good. 
let's do it at a walk. Okay, so once I have him on the circle around me, I'm going to walk and bring my hand down the rope, walk behind him, and see he'll just swing his hind end over so he's then facing me. Okay, so let's do it at a trot. I'm going to bring my hand down, walk behind him, and he'll swing his hind end over. Good boy. So when it comes to teaching your horse to respect you, being able to disengage your hind end and having them always facing you is going to help you a lot when it comes to just them being focused and them also paying attention and realizing where you are and how they should respond to you. So the next groundwork exercise that's great for teaching your horse respect is having your horse back up. So a lot of horses actually don't like to back up and that can be a problem. Let's say your horse is standing right in your personal space. That means they're not respecting you at all and you push them or want them to back up but they just won't. So that shows like a complete disrespect for you. So one of the things I want to teach my horse is to back up with the most subtle cues possible and to have them get out of my space. So to start off, all I'm going to do to ask my horse to back up is I'm going to shake my lead rope. And see, Tucker's pretty responsive, so I don't need to shake it that hard for him to respond. But let's say you have a horse that doesn't want to back up. So what you're going to do is, I'll put my rope on the ground so I don't perturb Tucker, is you'll start shaking and I'll give them a few like soft shakes, but if they don't back up, I'm going to gradually increase my shake until you know, I'm really communicating to the horse, you need to back up. So as soon as the horse backs up, then you can just stop shaking and you can just let them stand there and reward them. So once I can get my horse to move off of just a very slight pressure from the lead rope, like this, then I can start seeing if I can communicate with them a different way besides applying pressure to the lead rope. So can I wave my hand and kind of move towards them? and see he steps away and so you can start messing with that like do you need to apply pressure on the rope for them to back up because ideally I want to just be able to give him a look and point and he moves away from me because he knows oh I'm not supposed to get in her space good boy good boy so once I can get him to back up on the rope and when I'm out here I also want to get him to back up if I have to personally touch him and apply pressure so you can do this to the chest so I can push him here and he'll back up or even the nose, if I were to push him here, I want him to be able to back up and take a few steps back. So when it comes to teaching your horse to back up by a pressure you're personally applying with your hands, it's the same exact thing with the rope. So let's say I'm pushing on his chest, I'm going to push lightly first, and if he doesn't respond, I'm going to push harder, and if he doesn't respond, I'll push even harder until he even just shifts his weight or takes one little step back, I'll release and just let him sit there for a minute so he knows that that's what I wanted. And then I'll just keep gradually doing it until he starts to move off of it. Good boy. And then with the nose, it's the same thing. So you can take your fingers right here and I'll just apply pressure. Good boy. But same thing, I'll apply light pressure. If he doesn't respond, I'll make it a little harder. If he doesn't respond, a little harder. And you just want to hold that pressure until he responds in the right direction. Good. So one thing that's very important when it comes to your horse respecting you is being able to touch your horse all over and apply pressure without worrying about them biting you, kicking you, or freaking out. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to show you guys how to, you know, get your horse used to being touched and respecting your touch, but also respecting any pressure that you apply for them to move away from you. So to begin with, I'm just going to start touching my horse all over and getting them used to being touched and making sure that they're okay with me touching them so I can touch their legs, their head, their ears, back here, on the inside of their back leg. And this is just to make sure they're going to be comfortable with human touch. So if you have a horse that you're maybe not comfortable with touching everywhere or there's one specific area that they need to get more comfortable with, you can use your lunge whip to start and just rub it all over your horse's body. And this is gonna kind of act as your protector. So like, let's say your horse is bad about their back legs and you touch their back legs with the crop and they kick out. You're like, oh, well, I'm glad I didn't go over there. So you can start with the lunge whip, making sure they're comfortable with the touch of the lunge whip. Once they're comfortable with this, then you can move back there. So let's say you touch them with the lunge whip and they start dancing away from you or they're getting really upset. One thing you can do is once you hit that trigger area and they start getting worked up, just move the crop back to some place that the horse is comfortable with. So let's say I get right here and the horse starts getting antsy and upset. I can just move the crop back here till the horse settles down 
and then I'll just slowly work my way back to that area that they're kind of upset about just so they can get used to this pressure and learn that it's good and it's not going to hurt them. So once we can touch the horse everywhere, now we can start kind of seeing how they're going to respond with the pressure. So I want to be able to touch my horse everywhere and apply pressure and have them react accordingly. And so you're just going to use pressure the exact same way we use to ask the horse to back up. I'll apply light pressure. If they don't respond, I'll just gradually continue to increase the pressure until I get the right response. So, you know, we can start up here. And I'll apply the pressure and his head should go down. Basically, you're just seeing what happens when you apply pressure to a certain place. So if I apply it right here to the groove of his neck, he should just step over. Good. And same thing, you can run your hand down the legs, apply pressure, get them to pick up their feet. So how many of you have had a horse that just does not like to stand still? So we all know how annoying that can be. But it's also a great thing to teach your horse to respect simply by just standing still and learning to look to you until they make their next move. So we can see Tucker here. He actually looks like he's kind of falling asleep, but he hasn't moved this entire time I've been talking, and that's great. He's looking to me to see when his next move needs to be. So if he's just standing here and I point my hand, he knows he's gonna have to start moving that way. So I'm gonna show you a super easy way just to teach your horse to stand still. So the only thing you're gonna need for this exercise is patience, basically. So what I'm going to do is have him back up like we've just worked on and once he gets a little far away from me I'll just have him stand. And what I'm going to do is I'll just stand here and watch him and if he takes even the slightest step out of this place I put him I'm going to just wiggle my rope again and make him step back to where he was. So Tucker's done this exercise a lot so he's not going to move but let's say he was and he starts moving this way so then I'll immediately have him just go back and stand and in the beginning your horse is only going to be able to stand there for maybe a few seconds at a time so as soon as they start to move away you can correct them and then if let them stand for just a few seconds and then you can go over and reward them and let them know that that's what you wanted and so as you continue to do this exercise you can start to expect them to be able to stand for longer and hold them to that expectation. You know, I'll stand, maybe make him stand for 10 seconds. And if he can do that, then I'll come over and I'll reward him. And, I, and then I can even walk him around and let him be like, oh, a break from standing, I can move. So our next point is something that's very vital if you're working with a pushy horse or a horse that doesn't respect your space. And it is moving your horse's shoulders away from you. So your horse is gonna go wherever their shoulders are pointing. So in order to control where my horse is going, I wanna be able to control where their shoulders are pointing towards. So basically what we're gonna look for is the exact same thing we looked for when disengaging the hind end, although this time it's with the front end. So when I ask my horse to move their shoulders over, I wanna see their front legs crossing one in front of the other. Good boy. So from the beginning, I teach my horses to this without me having to personally touch them because I want to be able to get them to respond even by just me pointing and having them move out. I don't want to have to touch them because they shouldn't be in my space in the first place. So the way I do this is I start by taking my hand and bringing it up to their eye. And with some horses, they're sensitive and you can just make a pushing motion and see he automatically just starts, you know, turning his head the other way. So in order to get these front legs to step over, all I'm gonna do, put my hand up here and then move towards him with my body so he knows he needs to move away from me. And for Tucker, he is sensitive enough that that's all I really have to do. If you have a horse that's a little bit more dull, I'm still gonna bring my hand up to their eye, but then I can also use my lunge whip and just kind of wave it right here at their shoulder so they learn to move away. And so that one would look something like this. Good boy. So once you have control of your horse's shoulders, you have control of where they go. So let's say he's walking up in my space. All I have to do now is bring my hand up to him and he knows, oh, I better get out for space. So they're learning to respect you where you are and where you're telling them to go. Our next exercise for gaining respect on the ground is to actually lunge your horse. And how your horse responds on the lunge is gonna determine whether they respect what's happening or not. So if I have a horse that I'm lunging and they're constantly pulling at the rope and trying to test the boundaries of the circle I put them on, then that means they don't respect the pressure of the rope and they also don't respect 
how you are controlling them at the moment. So ideally, I want a horse that can trot around on a loose line and go around me and not test the boundaries, but also respect my space and not try to cut in and run me over or something. Good boy. So Tucker has done a bunch of lunging and he's been over this a thousand times so he can go around nicely on the lead rope but let's say you have a horse that is continuously pulling at the lead rope as you're trying to lunge them. So what I'm going to do if I have a horse that's pulling at the lead rope or the lunge line is I'm going to use what I've taught in my first point which is disengaging the hind end. And so anytime they start to pull on the rope I'm going to disengage their hind end to have them come back and focus on me but also just to remind them that pressure towards the hind end means that they need to come in. So when the horse starts to pull on the lead rope, what I can do is I can just start kind of stepping towards the hind end and encouraging the horse to then start turning and bending towards me. And so that will take that pull and the lead rope away and they can learn to go off of a nice loose lead rope. So I'm not sure if that made sense, so I'm gonna walk you guys through it. All right, so let's say he starts pulling on the lead rope. I'm gonna disengage the boy. He stopped, he's looking at me, he's focused. And so every time he pulls on the lead, I'm just gonna, I start here. Then I'll send him back out and then I'll have him do it again. So pretty quickly, the horse is gonna learn that when I move to their hind end, they need to start bringing their front end and starting to face me. So then when I start lunging again, and I feel a little tug on the rope from them, I can start walking towards their hind end, but encouraging them to continue forward. So then I have this bend and they're kind of looking to me and they'll be like this, instead of like this. And so then, you know, they're going to be focused in on me and in that circle and they're not going to pull as much. So once you're lunging your horse and disengaging their hind end and getting that good response from them, then what I should be able to do, because they're so focused and they're understanding that me going towards their hind end means for their shoulders to move, is I should be able to walk towards their hind end, encourage them to go forward with my crop, and they're going to stay turned towards me and see how loose my lead rope is right now. And if he starts to walk out, I'll just give it a little tug. Good boy. And so if I'm doing this and he's going well and then he starts to pull, I'll just step, disengage, good boy. Then I'll go. And so I'm kind of driving him from behind, but look how nice and loose my rope is. So our next point is teaching your horse to yield to pressure ahead of them. So this can help in a number of ways. Let's say when you're riding your horse and you apply pressure to your reins, does your horse ever fight that pressure and get strong and try to run through that pressure? Or maybe you're lunging your horse and you put your arm out or your uh, lunge whip out like this to try and stop them, but they just run through the pressure. So it's like the horse sees something coming like this towards them and their first instinct is to take off and try to get ahead of that pressure. And so what I'm gonna do is teach the horse to yield to this pressure, and instead of running through it, I want them to turn and go the other way. So to begin, all I'm gonna do is have my horse stand like this. I'm gonna use my lunge whip here, and I'm just gonna start making circles and bringing it towards them, and ideally I want him to move this way. So if I bring the crop this way, he needs to move that way, good boy and same this way. So I bring the crop this way, he needs to move opposite direction. Good boy. So when I go to lunge him now, I'll just start at a walk because a lot of horses, if they're at a trot or a canter, they're going to be more apt to try and run through the pressure. So I'll have him walk. So what I'm gonna do is start my pressure and he immediately turns and goes the other way. Good boy. And so you need your crop in your hand that's ahead of him. Good boy. Good boy. Right here. Hey, hey. If you have a horse that tries to run through the pressure of the lunge whip ahead of them, what you can do is come and bring them over to the fence. And I just have Tucker standing here, so you can just have your horse stand. And I'm just going to use the fence kind of as a barrier. So I'll take my lunge whip, start moving it. The horse will move away. So then I can get him to walk. 
and I'm just gonna use the fence as the same way. But I'm good. <laughs> that was so good. So what I can do is I can step in towards the fence and use my lead rope as a block to encourage the horse to stop. And this way the horse is just learning, you can't go this way, you're gonna have to turn around and go the other way. So once you've taught your horse to respect the pressure applied ahead of them, that helps you out a bunch. So let's say you're leading your horse and they're starting to get pushy and in your space. I can just take my lunge whip and put it out here and see, he immediately starts backing up. So they're gonna learn that any pressure ahead of them means they need to yield to it and respect it. If your horse struggles with other specific problems when it comes to respecting you and respecting your space, we have an entire other video dedicated to that and it's about ground manners. So we'll put the link in the description for you to go and check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and also leave in the comments any questions you may have and I'll try to answer you guys. But I'll see you next time.